everyone and welcome to welcome to uh, stack overflow clone application and today is uh, day three and you can say third session we already have covered the two videos on stack overflow uh, building a full stack clone application using pnpm uh, workspace and expono repo nest.js react app redux toolkit and all the latest stack stack okay so in the last video we were building the apis questions apis answers apis and the comments apis we will uh, build on top of that uh, I actually bootstrap the react app also so with the help of firebase integration I didn't build the pages I can just see the firebase token once you do the login with the google so we are going to use this particular access token to access our apis that is the the next thing uh, which we are going to do let me just copy this token this token is not that big one so I think I can copy this from here okay so this is my token which i will just pass okay i'll just remove the, the codes okay we can copy this and inside this we can just authorize our apis there is at the rate in the beginning so this is my firebase token okay uh what i will do is i think the firebase configurations are not correct right now which i need to correct so i will just go to firebase firebase console and i will try to get my client id secret ids and all i was talking about this wiki clone application because i can just use the re existing uh, app which i already have instead of uh, creating some new app and then configuring the the front end so what i'm going to do is uh, i will get the firebase uh, config So this is my Firebase config that is for front-end application because front-end application also I am trying to bootstrap. This is our UI and inside source. Let's say for now I am just putting it uh, as a config.ts. So I need to populate these all environment variables in the .env. So I can just create a .env file. This is create react app right so in create react app you can create a dot env file with having react app uh, as a prefix so this is all client side configuration for the firebase app right react app is the prefix i'm putting in the dot env so that when i'm trying to access i can access that by using it so in the config.ts let's move this config.ts in the inside not just putting it here so that is that we are going to configure so here we need to initialize the firebase config and then we have to just initialize the firebase auth using which we can create a user in the firebase we can do the login we can do the logout all these things are possible with this configuration so this is our simple login screen i actually updated the configuration for the firebase so here you can see inside the firebase js now i'm using all these environment variables which i have specified in the dot env right okay and now i just did a login login to continue okay it should be using this pop-up okay da, 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 da. i just need this id token and this token api is giving me this response access token i mean we already logged in it just like on the front end we just need to handle the redirection and once user logs in you should be able to redirect user to the profile page because now user session exists okay so i will copy this access token from here this is little big one okay and then because this is the access token which we have generated through the firebase api only i will just replace this and we can play with this token i will save it somewhere here so we can use it after even page reload okay now what is the next thing uh, we are doing so let's validate these apis and also create a custom decorator so that we can in the apis we can get the current logged in user the email and user id because firebase maintains the user id if i show you the authentication sign in method you can see this user 
can i see for the details okay no just like user id this user id we can store in the database okay so our user id should not be uuid because this is like a string so if we have that user id in our database as a uuid then it's time to replace that i think i kept uh, that as a uuid so that's not uh, the right thing we can just put worker so i will change it on all the entities so user id worker it can be default null for now okay comment entity and then the questions concerns questions entity user id is of type worker default null okay so this is where front end is running with the nothing just a firebase login screen and then here is our apis are running and now they are not complaining when i try to restart them they are getting they should be getting restarted okay so if i change something here yes auto reload is working and now this fort module reloading is working as expected now uh, what we will do is we will just check our apis so first of all now we are passing the current logged in user right uh, the firebase token so how it is going to impact our apis controller here we can uh, revive our auth guard right and here we can create a custom a custom decorator user which is going to extract the user data so i will just say user metadata so we will create this type user metadata in our application that will just take care of okay who is currently logged in user right so we'll go to our apis and we will just create this uh, custom decorator user and this user metadata is actually a type so that we are going to get from the auth package only so let's see our auth package when you have lots of code auth decorator okay i can also add some types in the auth guard anywhere i mean these types will be available so we are just putting uid and the email in this uh, user types and then okay we just need to create the decorator So user metadata is a type so once you do the login go to your question controller it should be of type user metadata so we need to build for getting this and this is a like custom decorator which we need to create here so what is custom decorator it's nothing but okay like uh, we need to extract the user information from request.user so what we will do is we will create a custom decorator custom annotation so we can create this custom decorator in our auth package only i will just create a user.ts file source user.ts file and that will have this custom decorator and typings so what this custom decorator is saying is i will give you whatever is on the request.user object when you are using this custom annotation and then we will export this also export everything from user.ts uh, and then what happened export everything from user okay user metadata already exported so we will remove it from auth guard and keep it inside a user because this uh, is related to user now we need to build this package this is auth to the build and then uh, we need to build this api also so that we can get the updated package definition we are building this uh, apis and then we are starting this before that we need to import this uh, annotations we have created right so we will go to the question controller i don't like this okay that's fine we need to fix this import user we are getting free it from dev auth user metadata we are getting it from the same place user auth now i can see if currently if let's say user is logged in and you are trying to access this api then i can just try to print user and we can start the application so it is running 
now build is fine our application is running right so we can test our apis let's say we already authorized i will try to create a question with this token okay let's try to see and here you can see the magic i can see the currently logged in user what we did we just added a, a custom decorator this is called custom decorator doing nothing we already have a user on the request.user object it is just populating that inside a controller so we already know what is the current who is the current logged in user and we also getting this underscore uh, user underscore id property and uid both are looks like same so you, we can use uid and here we are creating question so inside this what we can do is okay i am giving you the body also we have a user underscore id which i need to pass from the controller question controller body and the user which is of type user metadata so create question user metadata and just import the user metadata here from the same package and then user id is user dot uid so now we would start populating the user id whoever the, the about the owner who is creating this uh, whole profile even if you want to populate more information apart from the user id what you can do is question entity here you can create a user metadata of type json so i will just add another column user metadata okay this is of type any we will define the type for it and this is json b default null right now what user metadata contains so user controller create question and here this user metadata we will pass this from the user object so what do we have inside a user if i try to push it we have lots of information which we may or may not need to push at least we need uh, okay what is the email there used to be the logo of the user profile like who is currently logged in but it's a server side and we are just pushing only these many identities like auth time user id subscriber expiry email all these uh, different properties okay so this looks fine okay and let's check the database what we are populating there so our database name is uh, stack overflow let me populate the database so in database if you see the questions you can see the big things here right because here we are populating all the properties I will delete these records and you can see this one this record has lots of information about the user metadata user id and this user id we can use for lots of things okay so this is how uh, we are using this uh, apis to protect uh, our information right we are storing you don't need to store the user metadata you can just keep it uh, user dot maybe simple email you can store user dot email are we sure that are we getting the email in this object then we can use that property okay identities okay there is a property email yes so we can just simply do dot email we don't need to use the push the whole payload and now i will just create a another question and just check this thing yeah this looks fine now user id and user metadata we are able to populate so this is how we are populating and we are protecting the apis let's say if you remove this then you cannot access because we are using this auth guard now you see that we are getting 500 error which is really not good right we need to use the interceptors to intercept this particular request and just uh, throw appropriate response status code in the response so can we create a simple interceptor 
so that interceptor concept we can just check on the next js interceptors next js http interceptor that will just help us to send appropriate response status and we can add this interceptor globally okay this is binding interceptors for i mean there are like custom exceptions you are generating from your controllers so how we can handle those interceptors i mean we can just throw custom exceptions okay there should be one already created request timeout exceptions so we will add a request interceptor and then so this is how we create interceptor and register that globally at the app instance right so let's uh, do that in the main.ts we will register that interceptor app.use and we are going to create http exception interceptor exception interceptor and we will create a class so what how we do it inside domains you can create a inside app you can create a folder core and there you can create these different folders like uh, filters middleware if you are using them right so interface and then we have uh, interceptors interceptors are like uh, who can intercept the request and response we need to intercept the response and then send the response back custom response back so you can see http exception dot ts for now and it's like uh, i'm copying it from the same nest js app so we are throwing what we are doing is we are just throwing this exception custom exception and we are in, in terms of that we are just returning this response status and message sometimes we don't know like what is the exact message coming now we will register it to the app instance i mean i don't need to go through this code it is just capturing the request and response and then based on the status code like exception is instance of bad request exception it will try to uh, capture the response message okay what is the missing in the payload if the exception is a instance of http exception then it, it will just throw internal server exception and try to return the status and the message okay so http exception filter i uh, will go to main.ts new http exception filter we are importing that okay what is this uh, intercept is declared there okay it should be new use global filters okay because interceptors and filters looks like okay. same but this is a filter not interceptor and then uh, we can just check our apis and at least i'm getting unauthorized right so this is this is how you can customize your response it is throwing 500 which is still not good it should be 401 but i'm getting the message unauthorized because this message is coming from the auth strategy not from the controller if it is coming from the controller then you will get the proper status code message response status and all currently i know okay user is not authorized to access this particular endpoint because we are not passing the token now you just copy this token and start passing it then you are good you can create the resources right a simple api protection we have added and now we are also able to populate the user id from the token so we can build the rest uh, other apis so question controller now this is question service inside question controller what all we have so we have create update i mean simply we just fetch all the questions with the, the filter criteria i mean this is the pagination api we have done we will improve it a lot because we can also add uh, questions with the answers uh, with the just a join so we can fetch all the records of questions with their answers in this particular api question controller here you can also do the update and delete update question and that will be body and the current logged in user who is updating and the delete and delete we can add uh, 
authorization okay whoever is the owner of the question can only delete that so inside delete we are just passing the user so if you are the owner then you can only delete that so delete we need to take the question id this is the dto we have to add and just import all the add all the so this is delete which will return no content this is put call based on id so this is update question we need to know okay what is the so there will be three different dto's body will pass current logged in user and the dto which is at the rate param and this is uh, question dto question by id dto we already have that's good and we need to pass both the things body param and user so param is nothing but uh, a param question by id dto this is update so here instead of create this will be update this will be delete this is just a crud which i can also skip you guys can do that right uh, simple basic crud operations we are building update question and delete a uh, question okay now we need to write those inside our service so this is create create question similarly we have update we have delete delete update question in the inside update question you are taking and DTO there are third argument is the DTO in the update put question by ID DTO and then we'll just uh, get this done what we need to do here is based on question ID first we are going to check okay validate the authorization if you are updating and del deleting we need to validate the authorization as async validate authorization what it is talking about is you will just pass user and params and it will just check okay we have id which is coming from params so we will get the question const question equal to await this dot question repo dot find one because it's find one by id so we just need a single object and we already have an id so if we got a question if you didn't get a question that means uh, you are passing some wrong id so we can just throw new not found exception and it will be intercepted at the filter and it will just throw 404 id is invalid otherwise what we need to do is we need to validate the authorization that means whoever is the question dot user id should be same as this user dot uid if that is true then we will return this question object otherwise we can just throw new unauthorized exception that's it so we will do validate authorization before we do update so what we can do is we will also get a question object here question equal to await this dot validate authorization and we will pass user and param same we need to do on delete so if we are getting question object from this call that means everything is good you really have an access otherwise you don't have an access so this is dto which we are not passing so there is no body but there is a dto okay so here this is param and so user and param there are two argument same we need to pass from the controller okay so this is update so update we are passing body user and param so param can come at the last argument now this will resolve the issue here we are passing two argument user and param which is question by id dto because we are passing this id so we need to pass it using this validation pipe and here we have created dto for it delete question we got the parameter and the user we will validate the authorization if we got a question that means question really exists there and then we can simply do delete 
it takes i think question object or question id i think it takes id so id will be question dot id that's done so this is how you will delete what it is expecting okay delete question yeah because we are not returning anything from this here we are doing update so we already have a questions report dot save we can simply say await question dot save and what we need to do is question dot save because question is representing the question entity so we can do a call a save method on that and it is saying save option user id doesn't exist on save options okay we because it takes only it takes two argument okay which what you are saving means the id what i'm doing is it should be question repo dot save and what we are saving is id uh, i mean you can just pass this question object also which is here first of all you will pass the existing question and then the payload which you are overriding the body part question body dto here you will create a, another dto for it which is export class update question body extends partial type of uh, partial type of question body dto so this is how you can create a new dto update dto out of create dto and then you can use this update dto everywhere wherever you are just doing put so instead of question body dto it will be update because here properties are optional you don't need to specify each and every required property all those properties will become optional so this is the user id who is updating it and the metadata we already validate the authorization that only whoever created this question can only update it so there is no point of passing these attributes again because it will be the same user and here we are just deleting it so we are done with uh, these uh, different apis you can see create delete and update similarly here these are the question answers right you can also delete the answer after submitting it so questions id answers i'm some i'm creating the answers like i'm submitting the answer of this question id updating deleting and listing all the answers so listing all the answers uh, is the api we can build we can go to the question answers controller and our api looks like we'll just change this to the get and it is going to return status code okay this is going to be the get id answers so it will be fetch answers right here we just need to worry about the dto param dto and do we need to worry about okay who is the logged in user i think no we can allow user to fetch the answers without knowing who actually submitted the answers okay fetch answers and here we are passing only the params like what is the question id so we will create this fetch answer method async fetch answers and we are passing dto question dto i can actually copy everything and then we'll change the code okay fetch answers we just need to have a bracket okay so question repo dot find one okay i'm just trying to find the questions and then here we can do relations because relations we need to fetch the answers also all the answers of this question and this is there is no save we are just returning the response find one return this response simple like this is like fetch answers we already have a question id there is already primary key for key relationships and we can just check the what is the join condition so inside question entity this is answers okay so th this is the relations we can fetch 
while doing a query so question controller answer controller fetch me all the answers get okay id question dot find one and fetch all the relations like all the answers of a question so i can just play we can just play with this one we'll just update the token and then uh, i will just create a question submit the answer of this question so this is the id for which i we have created a question i will submit the answer try it out hello world come and java okay where is the other api i don't see that appearing so let's see what happened uh, we were we added that in the answer controller this is get and this is post okay id answers post and this is get is it not restarting we'll try to restart it forcefully i will i will just restart it npm run start dev okay and i should be able to see the other api okay we have it i will put the token back and again i lost all the questions i mean the answer for which i have created is limit 100 okay i'm not sure for which question i added that okay so what i will do is i will i can create a new question we also need to populate more and more properties in this response not just okay three and four so we can create a new question copy this id create some responses response is created now you can actually fetch uh, this particular question with all the answers you can see all the answers are coming in an array because we don't need to worry about transforming the response it's all about how type rm fetch the relations data from another table because this is foreign key table from there we are fetching these details right so this question has these many answers okay so this is simple answers api similarly you can build the comments api now my next focus is uh, working on the ui side and build something nicer like simple stack overflow ui with authentication uh, with google provider so that we will let, let's start working on that so we already have a typescript react typescript app baseline uh, we may not use a tailwind let's see what other options we have we can just write a uh, simple styles for the components so we are going to build our ui in the ui is a react type script with uh, redux toolkit and firebase because firebase is our authentication provider so before proceeding what you need to do is let me show you this is a simple layout and uh, here in the sign-in methods you need to enable the google as a provider authentication provider so you don't need to just uh, use this username password uh, if you already have account here you can also add other providers let's say i want to allow users to sign in with twitter uh, it automatically okay we need because this is external so you need to provide a api key and the api secret but let's say if i do facebook for that also i need to provide a api key and all because this is external but when it comes to the google authentication provider uh, it's internal because this is google uh, firebase so it automatically creates a select your created applications and create a client id so this is a this is simple setup right now uh, this is what our application looks like uh, we have just, i just have a two different routes and when you click on login with uh, firebase then uh, it simply redirects you to this home page and here i'm trying to fetch all the questions so now the questions api is a page generated and all we, we can also implement some kind of infinite scroll and we will keep fetching all the sort of questions and then here using these different methods you can answer you can add a new question right this is what we need to we are going to build this is like a bare bone html structure this is nothing they, these all are not functional much 
the only feature is like uh, showing the basic integration we are using react router dom version 6 which had some uh, changes breaking changes and then simple uh, react uh, redux slices like a uh, user slice the question slice and all using redux toolkit and then we also need to integrate the api services because once you receive a firebase token we need to store it in the redux uh, store and also maybe on the local storage so when you are making api calls we need to send that uh, authentication token access id token in the authorization header so that's our next step so we will build a one by one like a first layout then import the react router dome uh, create simple components auth components and this is the home page and then inside this we are just showing stack overflow feed feed contains the posts and then these are the multiple actions of vote down vote add a comment on to a answer so add a comment means you are adding a comment to a questions that is nothing but an answer now on a answer also multiple users can show sh put their comments that is a comment so we have a question answer comment these are three different entities so we can write uh, their slices and do the integration and this is a firebase so firebase provides a really nice utility like whenever the auth state changed we will navigate to the home page so when you do the login log out we can automatically should be able to redirect to the home page and we have only two pages right now home page and the login page so let's build this uh, application so we will start creating the components and we will also write the styles for it so let's work on the the react app so what we are going to do is uh, we have some baseline code a uh, which is already there now what we are going to do we will add the components the routing the the some redux toolkit slices and how we are going to deal with this asynchronous fetching of the data using redux toolkit and the slices because earlier i used to talk about the redux but recently we have redux toolkit a react router dom is also changed there is a version 6 so we are going to explore all these things so if i talk about react router dom v6 and then we have a redux toolkit i hope you are already aware if because lots of people are doing redux toolkit this is v6 this we are going to use to build uh, our simple app i think the major change here is now they are providing navigate api and programmatically we can navigate and there is a routes instead of switch so earlier if you remember there used to be switch now inside routes you can you can put all these routes whatever the routes you have like login a home page and that is inside browse router so browse router you can import directly from react router dom and programmatically you can uh, use this use navigate hook and then navigate and just pass the path i mean navigation is now uh, easier than earlier and the nested path is simplified you can see now you are just specifying path and element element is the react component so you are not specifying exact keyword path and then component this has been replaced so earlier if you remember we used to specify exact if i remember and then instead of this you will spe you are specifying component so now that's not there so that's a good thing and then redux toolkit it's just another way of uh, managing your redux state we will we already have a redux toolkit and then we have these reducers so the important con concept of redux toolkit is we are using these slices right so configure store you create all your uh, reducers reducers uh, are nothing but your slices so i will take a simple example like this counter slice right so it will expose the reducer you can see export default counter slice dot reducer it is exporting the reducer that we need to configure inside our store and then it is exposing all the actions increment decrement increment by count these are all the counter slice dot actions because these all actions it is exposing which can be triggered from your component and this is the this is the current state initial state is nothing but value is zero and this is your uh, uh, counter state right where value is number and then you can trigger these actions increment decrement increment by amount this is your reducer for the counter slice and then you can export this counter slice dot reducer that will be imported inside your create store okay so 
Redux toolkit. The important part is how we configuring the stores are fine. How we deal with this when we have a sync, uh, we, ha we have to make API call. So this is important part. Create a sync thunk. I will just try to zoom it. This we are going to use because we are making lots of API call to fetch the data and populate the data inside our Redux state. So let's say this is a questions or answer slice, right? In this reducer, you will be just putting only the sync, uh, synchronous reducer, which is just taking the actions and just updating the Redux state. Extract reducers. So here you will bind all the cases like the fetch user by ID will have a multiple state because it's a promise. It's a sync thunk. So it can have a fulfilled, rejected and pending. These are the three different state you will have. So based on those parameters, you will add these multiple cases. Builder dot add case for this fulfilled, rejected and pending. You can populate the different state because your what your current state is. Initial state is entities and loading idle. This is your current state and this is the type you can see. This is user state entities and loading is these uh, kind of type which can have these four values. So this we are going to use a lot. Create slice is simple API which will help you to create a slice that will give you the reducers and all the actions, right? Create actions. I mean actions are still the same. You can create a simple action which contains the type and the payload. So here you can see we got the action, action increment. Create action and I don't think I need to worry about create entity adapter and create reducer. Okay, so we are going to simplify this implementation. I still don't like the over complications in the Redux toolkit now because there are multiple solutions available uh, in outside world which are just more simplified. I have used the state management in the Swell kit or in the Swell JS. They are way more simplified than what we are doing with the Redux or NGRX or any other framework. But that's things are things. We cannot just control everything. Okay, now we are going to create a slice. Okay, so let's start adding and building our components. This is a simple React router from React router v6. Okay, and this is our code. So what we are going to do if you look at index.tsx we are going to create a store so inside a source we will start adding all those things inside source we will create a store folder so first of all the structure and all these things we will start creating inside store we can just create index.ts and similarly inside source we can also have a slices or let's say features and here I will create a simple user slice. User.slice.ts Similarly, if you have multiple slice, I will have a question.slice.ts Question.slice.ts Answer.slice.ts Comment.slice.ts right and these all will be async execution of uh, a reducer but here it is going to have a simple plain simple slice which is let's say once you do the login you get the user data from the firebase you just populate that inside a redux store so how our store looks like uh, we can just put a store so these are the features store index.ts we will just configure store so this we are going to import from Redux TS toolkit and we, will, we are going to create a reducer. So this is configure store. Right and how we are configuring it export default. Export default configure store we need to call and inside this we need to pass our reducers right inside our reducer we have a user reducer so we will create a user reducer which we are going to get from the slice import a user import a user reducer from 
so we already have features there we are going to create a user slice and from there we are going to get a user reducer so this user is being captured from user reducer so we are going to create a user slice so you what user slice contains a simple uh, create slice method and some reducers right so first of all import we are going to import a create slice from redux toolkit so we are going to do create slice okay and this is how we create a slice export const user slice equal to create slice function we will call and inside this you just pass all the arguments what is the name name of this slice is user what is the initial state initial state let's say because uh, here we only have uh, the value so initial state is value null or we are going to initialize user null inside the initial state and then we have these reducers which will take okay what are the reducers login reducer login action based on the state here i will update my current state so state dot user i think it should be user not uh, simple null and state dot user equal to we are going to pass the state and action i will type i will add the typings also so here we are going to get action dot payload and then we have after doing login there is a logout what logout will say okay once you do the logout whatever the current state we have i will just make the state dot user null because you did the logout and then it will just uh, reset the state right login and logout these are the two reducers we have inside this slice and then now here we can export the actions same as as we have seen in the documentation so we have two different state sorry two different actions login and logout that is coming from user slice user slice dot actions and we also need to export export const um, it's user selector right s e l e c t select this is user selector that we are you are going to use in your components to get the user data directly from the state state dot user dot user let's say we will see what is the the proper value and here we can just do export default and user slice dot reducer so this is going to return with the reducer that i'm importing inside my store so this is how you can create multiple redu uh, multiple slices and every slice will return the reducer and the actions and you can just do this huge selector right of the state and also uh, we can add the typings of our current state so this is our initial state something like this so what is our current state so the user state value is of type user because we are going to have a user properties and inside this state they, they we are going to have multiple properties i can create a interface export interface user that is going to have multiple types like let's say what all information we are going to store inside this which is coming from firebase username photo you can say string email which is of type string and then uid which is of type string okay so this is of type user and here this value is empty this is of type user state okay this is your initial state now this is your initial state and you are updating the initial state so this is how you just add the typings whatever the typings is required for your components okay so we have created a slice that we are importing inside our store so this is how 
we are creating a store configure store in the redux toolkit you just import all the slices and add that to the reducer so now this store we can pass to our index.ts at the top to add a provider tag as a wrapper so this is how we will add so provider where we are getting from redux uh, react redux and we need to import the store so provider store and then we need to get the store you need to import the store store from okay we already have a store inside this we are getting the store we will just pass that as a provider and we will pass app component as a child of it now so we have configured a store uh, and the store provider react redux provider pass the store and this is our component root component now in this component we can configure the router right so how we configure the router we just import the browse router dom and all and i will just put browse router here so i will just initialize my react router here i'm just putting just a root tag that means inside this app i'm going to use the router features that's it and then inside the app component this is app.tsx we will uh, design our routing uh, stuff okay so you can see export default app instead of this we will just say okay there is a div inside this div i will start uh, designing my routes so instead of in the react router dom version 6 you can create these routes okay these routes you have to get from react router dom this is like a new definition routes and inside routes you can just add your components right so inside routes we will just uh, add the route definition so we do have two different route route and path it contains path is forward slash element is actually a component like uh, will it accept a simple span tag because that is also uh, an element so this is a route and then there will be another route let's say the login so we need to create a two different components one is auth component so we are going to create a folder inside source that is component and inside components we can create two folders one is auth okay we are going to create auth and then we are going to add login.tsx here and login dot uh, let's say css if there are some styles and then inside component we are going to add feed feed means all the list of questions we are again going to have one more route it's not like we can just build everything through this there should be one more route which says is the id question id because we need a detailed page where we can show just only the question label and all the respective answers of the questions and the comments on that question not like so this is just a listing page here it is talking only about particular questions their answers all the submission of the answers upvote download all the information will be available here so there will be a separate component for it there is a login home page and then login we can also create a designer layout so that layout will be common for these two routes but for login we just need a simple button because we are using a google provider we don't want to create a simple sign up and sign in form that's everywhere now you can just configure a simple login by clicking on to some facebook login by facebook login by google and all these uh, providers there is a there are multiple libraries available which are providing this now let's create the other slice so user slice is simplified uh, it's not doing anything much asynchronous there are just a login logout actions uh, which will populate the user data once you do the firebase login okay now other thing is let's say the uh, question slice this we can do right because on page load we need to fetch all the questions uh, from the apis and this can be page generated also so what we need to do so this is question slice uh, user slice we can copy the user slice and then we will start adding changing these things okay so in question slice let's say we have the initial state 
let's see question state question state contains uh, the questions okay that contains uh, let's say we can create a custom type question state and this is a question interface what it contains is the list of questions right so question now because we are talking about asynchronous so we also need to track track the the state uh, of a data fetch so here we are going to create a multiple attributes like status status which is which is type of string and this can be of type let's say idle and pending also can be rejected this is status and then we have let's say data which is for now let's say the type is any and then error is also also type any so this is the question state so we have questions let's say simply question so this is my initial state of type question state okay and then in the inside the initial state what do i have i have a question which has couple of properties let's say the status which is idle okay we have data which is empty array and error is currently null okay so this is my initial state question state and this is my question slice now this is going to be asynchronous why because we need to fetch the data through some api call so here we can just say export const fetch questions and here we are going to use another api from redux toolkit create async thunk right so you might remember we used to do we were using a redux a react redux thunk as a middleware right additional middleware when we want to deal with the apis so the same thing uh, is being done uh, with the redux toolkit in just a different way so this is like a fetch questions the uh, async asynchronous execution name and here we are not passing any argument because we want to fetch all the questions so here we can just say let's say we are using exios dot get and then we need to pass the api which is i think questions Phase is one at the rate limit is let's say we are putting all the limit give me all the records of 100 we need to import exios import exios from exios because this is asynchronous and we are going to make api call so exios dot get once the promise is resolved we will get the the response and then we are going to return response dot data from this otherwise there will be an error we are going to return error from this okay how this uh, fetch questions is going to be used by this slice so this is the question slice we are calling create slice and then the, this is the reducers which is going to currently we don't have any reducers right we are just going to call this from our actions fetch questions and here we are going to define all the actions for this asynchronous call extract reducer and inside this we can pass multiple things okay so what are the different state of this fetch questions fetch questions dot pending dot type so let's say this is how we are going to deal with asynchronous uh, calls in uh, in redux toolkit using this uh, what we call it create async thunk so this is okay the first is the pending dot type okay this is the first action and here we are going to get access the state which is question state and action okay and based on this we are going to update our state so inside state dot questions we are going to update the status now status is let's say it's pending right 
so we can call this as a pending i think pending was the one state pending and then we have like data data because currently the api call is being made so we don't have a data so let's keep it as an empty array and then error that is null but now there will be other state also so here i will just copy this this is extract reducer for multiple state so one is a pending one is a fulfilled one is rejected i mean i initially like this implementation this is clean we are not dealing with uh, we are not dispatching multiple actions on the success of the promise failure of the promise here we can just say okay fulfilled so it is uh, what we can do fulfilled is idle because nothing is happening rejected is also idle here inside rejected we are going to get the data like action dot payload this will be the error object here the error is null but we are going to get here action dot payload on the successful execution because this action dot payload we are going to get on the api success if there is a failure this error object will be set here on the rejected type okay and then you can extract the actions currently we don't have any actions and selectors select questions we can say and state state dot questions state dot question state is the what is the question state i think i'm correct here state dot questions dot data i mean if you just want to get an array and this is what your slice is question slice dot reducer this is how you will extract the reducer from it okay this is simply like you want to fetch all the questions together right which will have all the properties and here we are going to set that state inside a data this is my initial state and this is how i have created a questions slice right and this is how we are going to deal with asynchronous execution because it's going what you are going to do is from component uh, from the like use effect or life cycle hook you are going to call fetch questions and we don't need to pass the id we on the landing page we are showing all the questions so we are passing questions page limit we got all the data and that data will be set uh, because if the promise is fulfilled this this uh, this will get executed and our state will be updated with the actions payload inside data okay so similar iteration we are going to do with the comment and answers so in inside answers we will get an id like okay this is the question id give get me all the answers for this right fetch question answers okay and this slice is answers here instead of this questions we are going to pass this id and we will just say answers it's not paginated right a simple thing so it's like fetch questions answers fetch questions answer and similarly you will just update these different actions this is can be fulfilled rejected and resolved like fulfilled rejected and pending and here instead of the question the state will be answers So this interface is answer and uh, inside answer you will have a data of type any because currently i don't ha i i'm not defining the type of the data it should be of an array of type answer okay so here this is going to be answers the type is same this is a question state so type is now answer state or you can say questions answer state because for a particular question we are going to fetch all the answers so this is question slice i mean this is uh, really a big name we could have used some other name question answer state so here instead of this i will just do answers state dot answers so whenever you see inside a redux state when you see the answers that means it is pointing to the because at a time we are going to show the answers of a single question in a 
different route of uh, react app so we will have active question id and based on that we are going to fetch all the answers of this questions and the comments so this is fetch question answers question answer state this is answers data and this is our slice so this is a question answer slice so we'll extract the reducer from this okay this is all about how we are playing with the redux toolkit we are creating slices and then you import all these slices in your store and just uh, pass this store so here now we have a questions so it should be a question okay let's create a question reducer question reducer from question slice that's it similarly we will keep adding the reducers so this is our store implementation a simple store how it really looks like and we are already passing this store in our index.tsx to our provider and inside app component now we have defined some basic routing and here we are going to play with uh, some simple firebase logic because what happens is once you do the firebase login the firebase uh, execute one particular hook firebase auth state changed and based on that we can just know okay firebase login has successful and then you can do some redirections okay so here inside routes let's talk about only two for now so we are going to create two components one is overflow component so here inside this feed we can create a simple overflow component okay so what we are going to do here is element this there can be a component overflow so this will be appropriate component overflow this is for this and this for, for login we are going to create a login component okay let's create these two components inside auth we have login.tsx so what i will do is uh, simple export const so these are here we are going to create a simple simple react components right so i can just simply say is function login this will receive nothing inside a props and it is returning something in the span tag for now we then we will design how it looks like so here we are going to import react and some styling and then because uh, we need to export it ex export default i mean you can either create a simple const and do the export here so this is your login.tsx and then here inside a feed i'm going to create overflow.tsx so the component is overflow stack overflow component and i'm just putting just a partial name so these two components we have created so i will just configure them to the the routes overflow import this and this import this these are the two separate components that we have added so now inside a login inside login we are going to write a login implementation right so login implementation we are going to use a social provider so let's first do the login implementation which uh, is provided by firebase for social provider login like login with facebook login with google login with twitter okay so let's work on the the login page and we also need to configure the firebase because uh, firebase we are using for as a client that is going to provide us a google provider so inside components store here we can create a firebase.ts i mean it is just exporting this firebase sdk app instance and then the provider because that is google auth provider and we have already enabled this firebase client app to use uh, google uh, as a auth provider okay now let's go to our the login component so inside login component we are going to build our login system right so it's going to be simple button let's say we'll we'll just create a simple button then we will just add a stylings and all so let's say button and when you do on click 
on click on to that button we are going to just handle click this action okay this is simple button now i need to define this const handle click okay and what we are going to do in this handle click we are going to use this sign with pop-up and auth provider from the firebase okay sign sign in with pop-up and auth and provider we are getting from the firebase so handle submit handle click what we will do is await this sign in with pro pop-up here we are going to pass auth firebase auth instance and the provider when you are able to successfully sign in we will get a result that result we can just try to log so here we will get the result so we can just print this result what is the value we are getting from firebase so this is going to be the async function because we are doing await we have to wait uh, for that pop-up and you just click on okay i'm trying to i'm going to use this my this particular google account for the login and I, if there is an error then we will just do dot catch simple i mean it's there is nothing complex in this we are just doing sign in with pop-up right so when you just click on login it will do sign in with pop-up and then how we are going to populate the the redux state with the user because now firebase login has already done so firebase provide a particular uh, hook which we can add in this app.tsx inside app.tsx we can just because we also need to import our firebase stuff firebase auth uh, here so let's put on top we already have firebase.ts we are getting the auth and all on auth state changed this is what we are going to use so here we will just write a use effect uh, hook this is the you this is a hook which we are using in react and here we are going to pass so here we are going to use redux right so what happens is in this hook we are going to check if on auth state changed event has occurred it is taking two argument auth and auth user because once you do the login you will get auth user and inside in this callback hook if the auth user is there that means you have successfully logged in right then we will talk about the dispatching the action so we already have a store we can just use we dispatch constant dispatch equal to use dispatch that we are going to get from react redux use dispatch and what we are going to dispatch we are going to dispatch the login so dispatch login and pass your payload this login because this is the action provided by uh, redux actions right from the uh, the login slice user slice here i'm able to import and here it is taking the arguments so we are passing couple of attributes username username is auth user that will give us all these properties you can see uh, so it gives us display name that is good enough and then there are a couple of other properties so we are passing all of them together okay so on auth state change will get triggered and it has a dependency you can see we are passing dispatch so whenever the auth state changed this use effect will always get triggered and then we are just populating this we are dispatching this login actions and whenever you reload the page you will always have the current uh, user state inside the redux state current logged in user inside the redux state and then so this is we are doing dispatch and in other components so if you are able to successfully logs in so if this is a logs auth user then what we can do is auth state changed 
we can dispatch we can actually use this react router dom navigate hook so const navigate equal to use navigate and then we can say navigate uh, to the home page so if you are on the login page login route and you are able you have done the login then we will take you to the home page because your session does exist okay so this is simple implementation now what we will do is we will try to see uh we will just try to check if this is working and in this overflow component we can access the user selector right let's say this is our simple component here we want to fetch what is the current state of the user right so from the selector we can fetch it so we have these uh, two simple routes one is simple forward slash home route and the login and inside login i just added a few things okay when you click on login we are going to do sign in with pop-up and then it should be able to uh, invoke this hook on auth state changed and if there is an auth user we will push all these properties and i'm also getting the access token using await auth user dot get id token that will give you access token and take you to the home page and then a uh, home page is overflow component right here i'm just uh, trying to json dot stringify the current uh, user user object from the selector so this is coming from the redux store and then there is a handle logout which is doing a simple logout through the firebase api sign, sign out dot then it is calling logout which will uh, put the redux uh, redux uh, store user object to the null and then navigate you to the login page okay a very simple implementation that we can just see how that is really working with the firebase uh, uh, integration so how uh, we can see this is simple logout okay we are can do simple login this is login with the social provider and once the login is successful you can see the whole data is coming up right username and the whole access token which is the, the firebase token we are going to use for the apis the email uid these are the properties we are populating inside a redux store and when you click on logout it will set these properties null and you are on the login page right so this is just like a basic demo uh, how the firebase integration we have done with this react simple routing react routing and basic components there is a login and then there is a landing page so when you do the login you will redirect to the landing page and when you do the logout you will be redirected to the uh, login page and we are using this google social provider with the firebase okay now we will start building the components one by one uh, we are we don't have much complex ui we are fetching the questions uh, with the pagination i will try to implement infinite scrolling with the simple react features some library and then we when you click on questions we will be redirected to uh, another route here we let's say we can have another route here which we are going to publish so it will be simple id because here this route will talk about fetching all the answers of the particular questions which we have created so when you click on particular question it will fetch all the answers and comments of that question so it's like a detailed route of that particular question in the stack overflow okay so this i mean we need to build a component for this not the not just a login component here it will be a different component and then uh, here we can just say auth this is overflow feed stack overflow feed and then here we can just say feed answers or we can just rename it i will just try to create a folder structure nice and clean and then uh, let's connect in the next next video next session we should be able to finish the ui part with all the components uh, we are creating in the typescript so in this part we have created a simple basic uh, redux store uh, slices uh, for the synchronous actions and asynchronous actions and then uh, we have integrated the store in our components and then firebase login and authentication simple how we are getting the token and how we are doing logout